Hi everybody, Jeremy here. I just wanted to share some of the highlights from our latest Climate Now Live event, asking whether 2023 is going to be the hottest year ever and what we're going to do about it. So we can say with a virtual certainty that 2023 will be the warmest year on record. Is 2024 going to be hotter again then? With all probability, yes. The climate data for September, for example, was described as mind-boggling by expert Ed Hawkins. Basically, it was off the scale until they redrew the scale, of course. Climate scientist Zach Klebe joined us. The deviation compared to any previous record is what's really surprising and that what we're all really trying to disentangle to find out what are the causes. Our climate is changing at a very rapid pace and we have to adapt to the climate that we're facing right now. The trouble is, we're not very good at taking on board that adaptation message, according to Alexandre Florentin, a Green councillor from the city of Paris. I think there is a huge misunderstanding regarding one specific point, which is that um, climate change is something that only goes forward. Nobody will ever experience anymore the kind of summers that they experienced when they were kids. When I say we're not going back to the climate of my youth in the 1970s or 80s, they don't like it. No, they don't like it, but um, well, it's the truth. So. <laughs> The truth is that globally, greenhouse gas emissions are still going up. Lucy Hubble-Rose is an expert in climate action or inaction. Um, we've often tried to make people feel afraid of climate change as a way of getting them to take action. And we know that actually that, that doesn't work uh, very well. And so what can happen is that they can, um, they can start to feel very paralysed. There is a very big group of people who, who um, have got that kind of rabbit in the headlights feeling. Alexandre is trying to change the conversation with a project called Paris at 50 degrees. It means simulating life in the French capital at 50 Celsius. The city of Paris organized a, um, a simulation of um, how we would have to react to a heat dome hitting Paris. The test involved lots of people, from the emergency services to residents of an old people's home, and also school children who were taken down to a tunnel where it's 20 degrees all year round. The idea was to test out what works and what doesn't. Among the things that I've noticed uh, so far is that there was this wow, this aha moment uh, that all of them, most of them had. And I've noticed also that it was not completely realistic in my understanding. Just I'll give you one example. Air conditioning have a limit in terms of temperature until which they can work. And I found out that the, most of the, air, uh, the ACs in Paris are designed to work until 42, 43 degrees. So if you have a heat dome above this temperature, you might have ACs uh, which stopped working. I, can I just say how much I absolutely love this experiment? For the organisations involved, what it's allowing them to do is it's allowing them to experiment with what it means for them. Where do we take it from here? One of the most active areas of climate science research right now is understanding these extreme events. And we know from the climate science that with a warmer world, we will experience more extreme events. We will experience more heat waves. So adapting and preventing the most vulnerable uh, being impacted by these heat waves are really critical. So I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of how climate scientists can work together with people who are experts in adaptation and policy and deliver these quote climate services you know provide mm. the data that's in a more understandable way where action can be taken you can watch the full 1 hour conversation by following the link in the description below with a breakdown on what's actually happening in antarctica at the moment and the effects of el nino from zach and sam and lucy and alexandre are talking about the tough questions that we need to start asking. You can find out more about how our planet is changing on euronews.com climate now and follow world news from a European perspective on euronews.com.